Hi, I'm Gary Beveridge of Tips for Travelers. In this video, I'm going to tell you 10 things that you need to know about Silver Seas Silver Muse to work out if this is the right cruise line for you and the right ship for you. Stick around to the end because the last two things I'm going to tell you are the things that I was asked the most about Silver Sea and Silver Muse. So let's get into it and find out those 10 things you need to know. Well, first of all, Silver Muse is part of Silver Sea Cruises. Silver Sea Cruises was formed in the early 1990s. It is the largest privately owned ultra luxury cruise line. It's owned by the Lefebvre family, uh, an Italian family, and there are as the time of recording this, as the Silver Muse came into service, nine ships with a vision to ultimately grow to 12 ships. The fleet is divided into two. There is the classic ocean side of Silver Sea and there's the expedition side of the Silver Sea. Silver Muse has gone into the classic ocean side, which basically means as it sounds, is that it sails around the classic ocean destinations all around the world. The expedition fleet sails to much more unusual places like the Arctic, the Antarctic, the Galapagos, or if it does go to more classical destinations, will go to more unusual places and explore sites that aren't normally seen by ocean cruising. The second thing you need to know is the ship entered service in April 2017. It was built in Genoa and it sailed out in early April. The naming ceremony, 19th of April 2017. The godmother is the daughter of the owner of the line and her name is Constanza. It's the largest ship in the Silver Seas fleet with just under 600 passengers and has just over 400 crew. Silver Sea are capping the size of the ships at the size of the Silver Muse. So there will be no bigger ships than the Silver Muse because they want to keep the ships relatively small and personal. So the third thing you need to know is that the Silver Muse operates in the ultra luxury segment. 596 guests, 411 crew, eight decks. It's an all suite ship. Every single stateroom is a suite. They all have butler service. They all have uh, very high quality linens. They have Bulgari toiletries. There's lots of technology across the ship, including these special interactive screens, iPads to take orders. So it's a very high tech, very ultra luxury ship. The crew are trained by the leading hotels of the world. So there's a real ethos around service and what Silver Sea claim is they have a very personalized service which tries to anticipate what you require as they get to know you. The fourth thing you need to know about the Silver Muse, like with Silver Sea, is they are all-inclusive fares. So let me talk about what's included in the fare. Your accommodation, obviously whatever sweet grade you've booked is included, your food's included, drinks included. So uh, in your uh, suite there will be a mini bar which is stocked with uh, beers or wine or alcohol, whatever you want, all around the ship in all the bars and at meal times, uh, drink is included within the fare. Wi-Fi is also included, gratuities are included, and also if needed, transportation from the ship into the port, if you're docking a little bit outside of the port, is included. The other thing you need to know is that right across the ship, it is an all suite only ship. There are seven different grades of suites on board. There is the owner's suite, there's a grand suite, there's a royal suite, there's a silver suite, and there's three veranda suites, a deluxe, a superior, and a classic. In the ship tour video that I have, you can also find uh, all of those suites in detail as I taught all of those suites and videoed all of those suites so you can take a look at those. The sixth thing you need to know about Silver Muse and Silver Seas is it's a relatively traditional cruising experience. So it's very much focused on you know the food, there's enrichment lectures, there's fairly traditional shows in the evening with the Silver Sea Singers, uh, there are things like card games, there's a library, it's not built as a resort, it's basically built as a sort of a, a high quality hotel really. So the focus is on great food, very comfortable luxurious accommodation, good service and the destinations. Now the seventh thing you need to know and probably one of the most important is around dining. There's no large main dining room. Instead, there are eight different venues across the ship, plus 24 hour room service. Of those eight venues, six of them are included in the fare and two of them you pay an extra surcharge for. So each of the six can hold around about 150 people at a time. And they are a wide range of restaurants. So there's La Terrazza, which is the Italian restaurant, which is a staple of Silver Sea, which is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It has food stations, some a la carte. 
There's Alantide, which is a seafood and grill restaurant, a very beautiful restaurant serving uh, seafood and steaks. There's Indochine, which is Asian food, uh, Thai food, which is very nice. An innovative restaurant is a place called Silver Note, and this combines music and food. So it serves tapas type, and there is music there in the evening. There's Hot Rocks, which is the open air uh, hot lava cooking, which during the day serves more traditional grill type food, burgers, that kind of stuff. There's an incredible pizza restaurant, which is named after a famous street in Naples, which is called Spacanopoli incredible incredible pizzas now the two restaurants you pay extra for are la dame which is a partnership with relais and chateau which is french cuisine and there's a beautiful japanese restaurant called kaiseki which serves sushi and at night does tapanyaki it's, it's open seated dining in all of the restaurants you can go whenever you want to however just to make sure you get into the one you want it's recommended that you perhaps reserve uh, a table in the evening for the time that you want now the eighth thing that you need to know is facilities. It's a relatively small ship, you know, it's just under 600 passengers, it's not a massive ship, but there's a huge range of facilities. There's a wide range of bars, including the Panorama Lounge, there's an Observation Lounge, there's the Arts Cafe, a very innovative new option, there's a Connoisseur Lounge for cigars and smoking. In the atrium there's a huge big bar area. In terms of entertainment, there's the Venetian Lounge, there's a casino, there's a card room, there's a library up in the Observation Lounge. There is also a, an activities center for kids. In terms of outdoors activities, there's obviously a pool deck, there's a running track, and there's also a spa and fitness center. Tip number nine is around packing and dress code. Now, Silver Sea and Silver Muse has a relatively formal dress code so it's not massively formal it's not black tie evenings but it is smarter than many of the other ultra luxury lines so in the evenings there's no jeans no shorts to be worn but it, you know expected to wear more slacks or equivalent for ladies there are formal evenings where men will normally wear jackets not always necessarily with a tie but it is a much more formal atmosphere which i actually like personally and i think it does feel much more like an ultra luxury line it's a little bit of dressing up and in the evenings it's much smarter and the tenth point and the other thing i get asked a lot is what sort of passengers are on board now the real heart of a silver sea are really the baby boomers so that's people sort of you know born post-war up to the 1960s so people like me sort of in their late 50s uh, are you know very common on board a silver sea so you'll find it's a lot of professional people retired people semi-retired people obviously on some of the longer cruises you will also get a slightly older uh, uh, group of people as well you know the real heart of silver sea are baby boomers who are interested in seeing the world because they travel to a lot of destinations silver sea argue that they travel to you know 30 40 percent more destinations than the competitors you know last year they went to over 700 destinations where their next biggest competitor only went to two three hundred uh, destinations so they do get a lot of destinations and they really try and cater for people that have a real spirit to go out and see things but actually want to do it in luxury mostly americans but there's a lot of british germans increasingly asian travelers they have over a hundred nationalities travel on silver sea so it is quite diverse overall but it still tends to be largely american focused so there you have it that's 10 things that i really think you need to know about silver sea and specifically silver muse it's the biggest ship in the fleet it's a very modern contemporary luxurious ship it's a beautiful ship hope you've enjoyed that and it's helped you i'd love it if you left a like on the video leave a comment of course and please very important if you do one thing please subscribe to the tips of travelers youtube channel and get more videos travel inspiration, advice, and tips.